Good afternoon. Um, I don't know where to start. Let me, uh, let, me, let me start by putting this disclaimer out there uh, for anybody in the room who's heard me speak before. Uh, I am passionate about this thing we do. There's not a day that goes by uh, that I don't wake up uh, with, with one thing in mind, and that is uh, improving uh, the lives, not just of our membership, Um, but everybody that I come in contact with. And so I want to, I'm going to take a couple of minutes, and I, I know Jimmy's probably sweating back there. Um, but there's a couple of things that I feel inclined to say. I'm going to tell a couple of stories, and, and then I'm going to make a couple of points. Um, I got a call the other day from a union president who went to his membership. Uh, he gets paid a few hundred dollars a month for that job. And anybody who's ever been a union president knows full well that 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 that, that salary uh, is not near enough for the pleasure of representing people who um, are not always pleased with your course of action. Uh, he took to his membership uh, a proposal that when he took off work and went and represented his membership, Uh, that he would like to be paid a fringe benefit, right? So this guy's, this guy's taking off his time and losing money, because Lord knows he could make more money on the pier. And I thought that his request was rather simple and certainly long overdue. And his membership turned him down. Right? I say that to make this point that we will go and argue for a guy, and in the South, in some cases, who is a non member, and we will beat on the table and demand that this guy get $35 an hour uh, while he's leaning against a post. And then we'll go back to our local and talk to, in some cases, the ladies who we know really run the ILA, right? The Maria Fongs and the Patsy Schultzes and, and, uh, and, and we're paying them little or nothing, right? So uh, it's time to change that. You know, it's time for us to not just be union members, but to be union. Um, I'm going to tell a quick story about a guy. Uh, just, to, just to make a point, we've been talking about union all week, 
and, 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 and solidarity and how strong we are together. Uh, but I'm going to make a point about uh, a couple of people uh, who single-handedly uh, have made some incredible changes in the world, right? And I say that to, to, to really magnify the point that if one person can make a change, how strong could we be together? Uh, there was a guy, uh, he was a teacher in Bangladesh, and I'm not a good geography guy. I should be. I spent three of the best years of my life in geography 1A. Uh, but I missed that part of the world somehow. But this guy was a teacher, and in Bangladesh, Bangladesh is a very impoverished com country, and and this guy was a teacher and not making much money, and he, he did a study one time. He studied, he, he surveyed hundreds of families and, and as, a, as a project. And during this time, he realized that of the hundreds of, he had $27 in his bank account. During the time that he uh, did this research, he recognized that he could change the lives of 42 families with that $27. So an idea was born in his head about creating what it has now uh, come to be known as a microfinance organization, right? It goes against every uh, financial rule that we know in America. And what this guy did was he decided that he would create a system where he would loan money to impoverished people in poverty with no collateral. Uh, and I won't bore you with a lot of details, but he took that $27 and he loaned it to a group of 42 families so that they could uh, make products to sell. And it was relatively successful, right? Um, He, he wound up starting a bank founded on that same philosophy um, called the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh. And I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, today, that bank that started with $27 is in 64 countries, 2,600 locations. They have 99.6% uh, return rate on their payouts, on their loans. 97% of the people who borrow money from them are women. Right. They now manage, uh, you know, 15, 20 billion dollars out on the street with nine million customers. One guy, right? One guy did that. Um, and it goes on. He, he empowered so many women in Bangladesh that they then realized being empowered that they had the right to vote. And so they started voting. 
and they started voting in big numbers. They overturned, the, there were some parties in Bangladesh that were opposed to women's rights. And through these women getting together and voting, all of those parties were removed from government. Uh, and then the women decided that they'd start running for office. So 1,485 women were elected to political positions in Bangladesh. So I, I don't want to belabor the point, but I say that just to say that this guy with, with $27 literally changed the world. And, and just to mention that, you know, some years later, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, right? They've got 19 branches now in the U.S. They've expanded to, to uh, countries that are not impoverished. 100%, 100% of their customers in the U.S. are women. Uh, so, so that's just one story about how one guy with an idea, with a vision, can change the lives of millions. Um, my second story is this. My bride, who is, you know, just this really cool girl, the fact that she's put up with me for a long, long time, and I haven't always been a saint, contrary to popular belief. Um, years ago, she would take my girls to school when they were little. And she started this thing just on a whim. She was in the line at a, at a fast food restaurant one day. And she said, I want to... I want to get the breakfast for the guy behind me. So she used to stop at a McDonald's every day on her way to take the girls to school. And so she just decided that she would make a practice out of that, you know? So every single day for years, she would pull up an order and then pull to the window and say, whoever's behind me, I want to get their breakfast. And what was amazing about it is that as that trend continued, she would show up and the people that worked at the restaurant would tell her these incredible stories about people that would pass it back you know, pass it on, pay it forward. And sometimes it would, the trend would just continue for 20 or 30 cars, right? So both of those stories I tell for this reason. We have an incredible opportunity to be union right? It, it, it never ceases to amaze me what a dollar can do. Um, Harold has blessed me with this incredible job, right? And, and, and this membership has blessed me with this incredible job. And I want to tell you guys, I give away uh, what seems like more money than I make, right? Um, it's funny now because in the office, you know, we're all scrambling to tip whoever. You know, I, I, I rarely miss an opportunity to, to, to put a tip on a credit card, and, and if it's an ILA credit card, the DOL limits us to what we can do. I rarely miss an opportunity to add a little more, right? I never miss an opportunity
to take care of somebody on the street. Listen, and, and here's why I'm saying that, right? Here's why I'm saying that. I'm not looking for credit for that. What I'm, this is what I know. You know, you pull up to a guy and he's, he looks like he's really healthy. And you're thinking, well, why would I give that guy money, right? He could be down at the union hall uh, making a living, you know? Here's what I know. Uh, I don't know that guy's story. or that girl's story. Uh, what I do know is that God has blessed me with the ability to give some money away, right? And what I what I know about that is that I'm not the guy who's judging that guy that's standing on the corner with a sign, right? And the way I look at the world is that I'm going to give them some money and then I'm going to let God figure it out. If, you know, money, money, the, the basis of money is not what it can get for us or how much we can get in the bank. The basis of money, when you really drill down on it, is how it makes us feel, right? You get some money, you go buy a jet ski, you get on the jet ski with your family and you, you go out on the lake and it makes you feel good, right? It wasn't the money that made you feel good. It was the jet ski, you know? So money is, is just kind of a byproduct of getting to a point where we feel good about things. And, and I'm gonna tell you something. There is no better feeling in the world than seeing the smile on somebody's face that knows that, that you appreciate them. And listen, you know, I'm not talking about giving away hundreds of dollars here. I'm talking about if you're at the drive-in and you hand somebody a dollar, just one, that dollar may not change their lives, but let me tell you what it does do. It lets them know that, that you appreciate the work they're doing. And, and, and let me just tell you this, if you ever give away some money that brings a tear to somebody's eye, there is no better feeling in the world than that in the world. It's better than any jet ski or any, you know, whatever you could go buy with money. If you've ever experienced that, there is no better feeling in the world. So here's what I want to say. This is, this is what all this leads up to, right? What I challenge us to do is not to be union members, but to be union. And, and what that means, we're sitting around at these big dinners and you know, man, the food has been great and the staff has been great and we get up from the table and we walk out and we leave these folks behind to clean up our mess, right? So, 
you know, if you got a dollar in your pocket or, you know, in some cases, Benny Holland money, you know, uh, toss it on the table for them. You, you, and, and listen, and they, they are not the ones getting the real benefit. You are. It, it is amazing. Clyde and I always argue because Clyde will want to give some money away. And, and those guys have been great mentors to me. And, 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 and so Clyde will give a guy $20 for taking care of us at a table. And I'll be getting some money out. And Clyde will say, no, man, I already, I already gave the guy $20. And I say, man, there is no way I'm going to let you take my blessings away from me. You know? One dollar can change the world. One dollar can change the world. I'm going to touch on a couple more things that are just kind of housekeeping, right? Um, Dennis has said a little bit about it. Uh, the time for us to take care of our house is right now. Uh, if, if I was, if anybody in the room was down at the stop and shop or wherever we are and we saw one of our ILA women getting harassed by somebody, uh, it would be time to fight, right? I don't know anybody in the room that wouldn't protect uh, our ILA women or our, our ILA members, but on the docks, sometimes it's a different story. Sometimes we're sitting in the break room or out on the job and somebody is uh, speaking, um, using some profanity or, or talking down to women, making some crude remarks, and we let that go. And, and we wouldn't let it happen down the street. Uh, by God, we shouldn't let it happen on the docks. It's, it's time. You, a lot of people in the room have heard me say this. There, are, there is no local union in the country that one six-shot revolver couldn't cure, right? It is time for the 95% of us to tell the 5% of the, of the union that are effing this thing up that they gotta, get, they gotta get right, right? They gotta get off their soapboxes and either they gotta get in line or go down the street. It's time for that to happen, it's time for us as a union, it's time for us as members to demand what's right in our house, right? <laughs> Last year, uh, I was blessed enough to get reelected by the South Atlantic and Gulf Coast District as president. And, uh, we, we have to have so much time in before we get completely vested. So the bad news for some people is that that election gets me to 20. Um, so I am, uh, I'm not playing politics anymore, you know? Not that I play too many politics, but, uh, I am, I am going to make sure that the members of this union get home safe the same way they showed up, and I don't care who doesn't like it. <laughs> one, more, one more quick thing, and I'm sorry I've, I've taken so long up here. I don't mean to hold you guys up. Uh, my brother passed not long ago, and, and thank you for all of the heartfelt uh, condolences. He was a good guy, and he was a lifetime 
longshoreman. Uh, he went and got a colonoscopy at 60 years old. And when he did, he found out he had stage four colon cancer, right? We, we've been up here for days, for weeks, uh, actually, bragging about Myla, but I want to tell you something. It is not the best insurance in the country if you don't use it. So I'm going to just say this one last thing. If you are 45 years old and you haven't had a colonoscopy, and I, I guess I mean this literally, get your ass down to the doctor <laughs> and, get, and get it done. Uh, I, have been, I have had some illnesses in the last many years, uh, least of which was prostate cancer, and, and I've been probed and prodded so much that I show up now with cards and flowers, you know. Um, <laughs> Let me say this, my bride at 55 years old just, just got a colonoscopy for the first time ever, and, and that was with me in her ear all the time, right? And the reason that she didn't go is because she said, I just, you know, I keep hearing horror stories about drinking all this stuff and, you know, whatever that is. So for those of you who don't know, that, you know, medical technology has advanced, and that thing has advanced so much. The last one I got, I took a handful of pills and went to the doctor, period, right? There's no more gallons of castor oil. Or, so if you've been concerned about that, don't worry about it, because it's easy, right? I will say find a doctor with little hands, but <laughs> other than that. Um, anyway, listen. Uh, go, go make a difference in the world, right? The, the, the one thing that I want to I wanna say is that that when Barb was doing that deal at McDonald's with my kids in the car, uh, you know, think of the lesson that that taught them, right? When they were 12, 13 years old. They, they give away more money than me. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. And, and, you know, while you're here, if, you're, if you have a nice dinner, toss a buck on the table. Let, let people, and, and, and it's not about the money, I promise you. It's not about the money. It's about people feeling appreciated, you know. We were talking about one job should be enough. We can make that job enough if we go in our pocket and help them out. You know, listen, thank you for letting me belabor this thing. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the ILA. Stay here for a second. Stay here for a second.